Hi, Brandon. Hey, Kat. How are you today? I'm wonderful because I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> Whenever you guys let me out of my little commercial room, <laughs> Let I'm you out of your cage. Yes. <laughs> so um, you're going to show off today the Ranchilio Cryo yes. Grinder. And Cryo. this is their their new kit on the block. This is their newest one. Um, it's coming in line, if you guys are familiar, with their MD50. It's okay. basically the replacement for that. MD50 is mm -hmm. not gone, but this is there's really not a big reason why you buy the MD50 over this one. Okay. So this is their newest one. Um, this is the doser version. They are coming with a, what's called an on-demand version as well, so it'll have an automatic doser. Okay. So you won't have this big old lever. The lever action. Yep. Okay. So, oh, no, I didn't clean up my coffee. <laughs> um, so this one is my favorite because it's called the... Cryo. 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 <laughs> I, I want to call it Cairo. The Cryo 65. Okay. However, it's got 64 millimeter burrs. Mm, all right. Yes, exactly. You got to read the fine print. Okay. Um, basically, there's a couple of things that they've done with this. One of the biggest things you can see right here is yeah. aluminum fins. Okay. This surrounds the grinding chamber. So, mm -hmm. the theory on this, and we're going to put it to test, is it absorbs the heat. Okay. So, most of that heat that's inside of there, this aluminum sitting right next to it, it's going to suck it up, absorb it, and actually dissipate it outside of the machine. Okay. The idea is that's going to allow us to be able to run longer and, and obviously not be cooking and burning that coffee. Nice. So, um, you should end up with cooler grounds at the end of the day. Exactly. Okay. And, you know, you always got to remember we are going to be talking minimally. So, mm -hmm. it's not like you're going to have one that's just on fire too much. <laughs> Smoking but, grounds. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But the difference of literally being, you know, 200 degrees in that chamber versus like 195 yeah. can be all the difference if you're cooking it or not. Okay. Um, a couple other things that they did on here that are that's pretty cool. Um, when you actually take this off, mm -hmm. when it comes off, what you do to it? I broke it. You got to pull it all the way out. Apparently, let's try that again. See, we don't, we don't have blooper reels on this here shoot. It's live or die. We're one long blooper reel. Okay. It's, it's flat. I love that. Yes. Yeah. So every other one you'll see, I mean, you kind of do this weird little, like, almost, mm -hmm. let's not dump our coffee type thing that balances. Just like, you just let it sit. So it's got a gate valve. You take it off. Keep your coffee in there. Yep. Okay. And they give you a nice little fancy thing letting you know it's closed. It's closed. Because I wouldn't know that otherwise. Okay. <laughs> so when you pull that out to remove it, that's the gate valve that's pulling the, it out. Yep. If so I it's would a have little bit coffee, counterintuitive because usually you, you push those in. You do, yeah. Normally yeah. you push it in to do it. So you're going to act because you have a little slider, if you yeah. will, that's going to be closing it off. This is actually pulling it in, which is probably why they tell you it's closed. Yeah. Um, once we actually get inside of here... You're going to see it's not too much different than, than really the MD50 or the other ones you see. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit a little bit of work to get inside because you will need a screwdriver. So mm -hmm. if we want to get inside to the burrs, we're going to have to take it off right here. And that's just um, like a little worm drive that's running the, that's cooking into these yep. teeth over here. Yep. And I'll show you how to get this off. This right here, you can see this spinning. So once I hold this little lever down, see how that just spins? Yeah. It's going to bite into these teeth. And then it's going to spin that. Okay. The other thing, and let me grab another little screwdriver while we're here at least. It's got these three little screws right on here. Mm -hmm. There's a little locking ring. And what that's going to do, you can see once I loosen that, that spins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when I set my grind back, once I'm done with this, I'm going to set it back to where I am. And I want to center this. And the reason is, as you can see, I'm going to put this right back on here. Mm -hmm. See how it hits it? Oh, and stops. so that's really, you're setting your range yep. for the grind, your possible uh, courses to finest. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, ideally when, once this is put back together and it's there, making an adjustment from here to here is actually a pretty mm -hmm. big adjustment. Yeah. So if you're going to go from there all the way to here, that's a pretty big range of motion. Mm -hmm. They, they want to try to protect it a little bit because some people can just really spin it way out of there. And then once that grind is so far off, it's kind of hard to, to get it to back out in. what's going on. Okay. From there, this just spins off. Uh, let me set this back just a little tight real quick so it's spinning on me. This will just spin right off counterclockwise, which is nice. Oh, look, it's got little arrows too, by the way. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I get excited about the little things, Kat. I know you do. <laughs> Keep going and going and going, and it's off. And we can get down inside the burrs. Okay. So you can see it's the exact same you know, burst that you're going to see in most of your, mm -hmm. your 64 millimeter burst set grinders. Um, so inside of there, it's basically all the same. Okay. Um, very easy to get to those still again, three little flat screws. If we want to change these things out, um, nice, Pretty big, simple to do. nice big collar to get into and out of. So it's really not that hard to actually get it off or on. Cool. All right. So we're putting this back together now. One of the big questions people are always asking is how does this go back down? And okay. so right now you can hear it's on. We're mm -hmm. not hearing any noise. What we're going to do is we're going to just kind of keep spinning it until you hear the the uh, burrs and set they're touching. 
Oh, I want to be a little bit careful. You hear that yeah, noise? A little whir. Yeah, just a little bit of whir. That is where they're touching. Now that's going to be too fine for okay. espresso. But what we can do, in, in each grinder is going to kind of vary, but once we have that part, we can coarsen it up just a little bit. So I'm going to pretend it's kind of right there. I'm going to take it back to about right there. Okay. That's at least going to give me a good starting point. Now it may end up being here or there, somewhere around there, mm -hmm. but at least we're close enough that we've got... Um, you know, that, that we don't have to waste too much coffee resetting that grinds. Okay. So once that happens, you see I'm going to set this back kind of into middle, and then I'm just going to go ahead and tighten these screws back. And Brandon, when you put that, um, when you put the uh, uh, little worm drive adjuster on there, what number are you going to set it at? Is that going to be your middle range? You know, your if, middle number? if you were a, a smarter person than I, <laughs> you would probably be nice to yourself and maybe try to set it at zero because you can do that, right? You yeah. Can, you can actually change that and it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I don't care because a number is a number. I, I don't really pay attention to the fact that it's zero, five or any like that. It's just a one, two, three. So I really wasn't going to put any effort into it. <laughs> but but what my, if somebody wanted to, would they put it, at, are, are we technically at their mid range I, point now or are we? At their zero point. Well, we're gonna figure out. I, ideally, we're hopefully if I did that right, I'm gonna be pretty close to where I want to be espresso wise. Okay. Uh, what you could do with this grinder though, because you can actually turn this. So when mm -hmm. I push this lever down, I can spin that wherever I want before yeah. I put it back in. Once we do this, I could actually set my grind to where I like it, mm -hmm. and then set that as the zero point. Okay. And now you can actually then pay attention to how much am I really changing it off of where I liked it. I see. So you could walk in, and, and that number could actually matter to you. Which Got is it. Kind of cool. Yeah. So we're going to take this back in here. Same thing. I want to just get this in. If I can actually get it down, grab my screwdriver. And that's just going to lock right back in place. Once it stops, we're good to go. Okay. Pull this back on there. Grinders back together. Okay. Um, so let's take a test with some coffee here and actually see how we did. See how we did here. And see, that's not bad. It's probably a little bit coarse for espresso. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not too bad. So I would really, at this point here, to make this adjustment. Are that, you gonna? Do you have to have it on? Um, you know, you do. What I'm okay. gonna do here, though. So this yeah. is a little tricky because you have to hold this down, otherwise it won't spin. Okay. So I've got my hand over here to hold on to it. Okay. What I'm gonna do is take it first and just start twisting it just a little. Somewhat tricky. Is, I don't know if you can see this, but it's giving me tension. Yeah. So you need to make sure you're kind of holding on here to actually make that adjustment finer. Okay. Let me dump out this real quick because that is old stuff. You always want to make sure you're dosing out just that little bit to get rid of that hold back. Okay. And let's take a look at what adjustment that just made. So you can see here now we went about 10 notches. 10 Oops. notches? Okay. Yep. About a total of 10 notches. We're going backwards, so it went 0 to 25, and we're going in 5 increments. Okay. Let's see. Still a little coarse, it's a little better, but you can see it's not, you know, it's it's not a huge, huge difference right there, those little micro notches. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably gonna go another 10 notches and I think I'll be right where I wanna be. Okay. So let's do that one more time real quick. All right, so we ended up basically making one full rotation around. It's, we're back to the zero point. I okay. went all the way around. And now I actually got to a good um, espresso. This is roughly where we wanna be. So I was pretty close, um, you know, actually getting inside of there, but now we're really fine, very powdery. So basically okay. setting it, you you did it at, you had that as your reference point as the zero. We did one full backwards rotation. So we we moved the whole burr one time completely um, around? No. So and, you one know, time closer or, or what does that mean? I, no, it's, I guarantee you we did not move a full time because there was only about, I mean, there, there, there's only about 30 spindles that's actually inside of there. I um, see. I'd have to open it up and actually see how much that equated out to. Okay. But I couldn't have gone a whole rotation because I set that little uh, spacer yeah. in there. Okay. And that really cuts me off at half so I didn't even go I see far. so that full rotation quote unquote is really this, this. guy yep. not the burr yep. okay it's, it's a gear it's a little tiny baby gear with a much bigger gear I'll buy it back. A yeah okay. it would have blocked out before I even made it halfway around cool um, so, but yeah, you can see, you know, we were, we were pretty close, but yeah. as you saw, that's the whole point of really getting those burrs a touch mm -hmm. is it gets you so much closer. I didn't waste that much coffee actually trying to do this. Um, and now what we can do is take this, this course. I'm going to open it up as course as it'll let me until I hit that ring, uh, which will take, 
I don't know, but a good 15 seconds or so. Okay. And let's see the difference of that versus how well, coarse. Let's, let's check this consistent. I mean, consistency wise, it looks great. Yeah. It, it's grinding out really fast, you know, as far as the the time for dosing. Yeah. Dosage wise, we should yeah. be between four to five seconds for that, that roughly that 14 size. gram draw. Okay. Um, and it, it should really hold up to that. I mean, I only ran it for maybe a second. I mean, yeah. you can see how much I pull through here, Okay. which is nice. Um, obviously it's an espresso grinder, so we, we are gonna go coarse just to see kind of where it goes. And see how consistent it remains. Yeah, and it's completely stepless. You can really go to chunks, if you yeah. will. That's not its purpose though, so you're really never gonna be running it that yeah. way, if you will. Um, now, I, because I'm coarsening, which means I'm opening it up, mm -hmm. I do not have to um, have it on. Because you're moving the bar burst further away yep. instead of closer together. Yep. The reason it's on is because there's something in there, so it's binding if yeah. I try to push it. Right there, I just did that. So now, if you see, I'm locked out. So I okay. just hit my spacer. I can probably put this in here so I don't get <laughs> Get some of that out of there. So you can kind of even see right here. See how some of that's still powdery, mm -hmm. but then into here it's a little bit thicker. Yeah. And that's because of all that hold back. Now, when we talk about hold back, this is actually a really good thing for you to be able to see. Because can you see right there how coarse that is? Yeah. So I made that adjustment, but look how much really it didn't start until about right here getting coarse. So, it, but it's still pretty fairly consistent, I yes. would say, mm -hmm. in its in the particle size. So. Yes, very consistent. Once we actually get to that, you'll probably see. Let me go wow. ahead. No, <laughs> I only brought the to one you shirt today. <laughs> we need to get you an apron. <laughs> Let's go one more time. I just want to see here because we still had a little bit of that fineness in there, mm -hmm. but now here now you can see we're really into that that just pure coarseness. Yeah. Um, it looks like chewing tobacco or something, <laughs> but um, it's still not that. It's not super. In Sometimes you get to this coarseness level on some grinders, and it's just like gr road gravel. Yeah, you know. And we could do that again. I would have to go inside. I would have to basically yeah. reset that setting point. So there is exactly why that's kind of a big deal as well. It's really nice to, to be able to hold it. So who is this for? This what, is what for is the uh, the best purpose for this grinder? Who should be buying this? This is really your everyday cafe. So okay. people that are doing 100, 200 drinks a day, you know, that are really a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a 450 watt motor in it, which is a really big motor for these grinders. A mm -hmm. lot of the comparable ones you see are, are really in the mid 200 range, 300 range. Okay. Um, so it's a big motor inside of it. Um, the idea behind putting a bigger motor into this grinder and also by putting these fins is going to allow me to do serious volume on it. Okay. So, I mean, you know, again, this is, a anyone really could use it. It's not going to hurt you if you're only doing 50, 60 drinks a day to have it, mm -hmm. but it's designed to be able to handle a couple hundred drinks a day just be in production cool. all day long. All right, so that is the um, Ranchilio Cryo. Cryo. <laughs> all right, thank you very much, Brandon. Thanks, Kat.